My name is Bill Kinney, and this is the 12th in a series of videos about complex arithmetic. I'm using Mathematica as part of my teaching here, and uh, will continue to do so. First, a quick review. In recent videos, we've been talking about complex number arithmetic, focused on multiplication and division, and also the relationship between the modulus or the modula, modulus of a product and a quotient with the moduli of the individual factors, as well as the arguments being related as well. Again, the modulus of a complex number tells you the distance between that complex number I thought of as a point and the origin, or the length of the vector representing the complex number, and the argument represents the angle between the positive real axis and the complex number. Though there is ambiguity, that is only determined up to multiples of 2 pi. Here's the relationship between the moduli and a product. It says that the modulus of a product is the product of the moduli. The argument of a product is the sum of the individual arguments. Or maybe it would be better to say an argument of the product can be thought of as the sum of two arguments of the factors. For a quotient, the modulus of a quotient is the quotient or ratio of the corresponding moduli, and the argument of a quotient is the difference of the corresponding arguments. I'm going to now turn to this code here that I've shown you before for multiplication and convert it to a division instead of a multiplication. So this times here, I'm going to convert to a division there and here. I also do need to update things a bit here. I didn't have it quite updated enough to use for division. I'm going to copy and paste this entire thing down here and here as well to do the division. And I also need to make another change right in here. This needs to be changed to being the real part of this thing. And I believe it's now ready to illustrate complex division geometrically. So it's going to be this complex number, which is 2 plus 3i, divided by this complex number, which is negative 1 plus 4i, is going to be the initial division done to give you the complex number down here. What complex number is that? 2 plus 3i divided by negative 1 plus 4i. 10 seventeenths minus 11 seventeenths i. You can see it's positive real part, 10 seventeenths, and negative imaginary part, negative 11 seventeenths. Now if I change this point, I'm going to change the numerator. Let's move it farther out so that the quotient will be further from the origin. Now let's see that the, it seems reasonable that the property relating the moduli and the arguments does work here. So the modulus of this thing uh, is approximately, look at it here, maybe about 15 or so. The modulus of this one is about 4 to 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. That should be close to the modulus of this. That is indeed close to the modulus of this that we see there of approximately 3 or so. Maybe a little bit more than 3. How about the arguments? Take the arguments of the numerator, the argument of the numerator looks like it's perhaps about 50 degrees, and subtract the argument of the denominator, which is about 110 degrees perhaps, um, 50 degrees divided by minus 110 degrees is negative 60 degrees, and that seems reasonable for the argument of this complex number there. So we verified that. You could continue using such code to verify that those properties by moving your points around. In any case, it's going to be this one divided by that one gives you this one. I also want to review complex conjugate and show you how the complex conjugate um, is related to the division that we do. The complex conjugate of a number a plus bi is a minus bi. You negate the imaginary part realize that if b is negative, then negative b would be positive. Notice that when you multiply a complex number times its complex conjugate, you get this. 
you get a real number that's non-negative. It's the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. And in fact, another interesting thing about this is that is the square of the square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, it's the square of the modulus of the original complex number. You could write it like that. In complex conjugate notation, we could write that z times z bar equals the modulus of z squared. That's a more compact way of writing what we see here. These two things are saying the same thing. If you multiply a complex number times its complex conjugate, you get the square of the modulus of that complex number. In more compact form, if z represents the complex number, when you multiply it times its complex conjugate, you get the square of the modulus. That's an important formula, just like the other formulas that I've been showing you. Let's highlight it and make it red here. Let's see how this comes up when we do complex division as well. I showed you, first of all, I motivated how to think about the idea of the reciprocal of a complex number. It's multiplicative inverse. Given an a plus bi, what x plus yi will, how do you have to choose x and y so that when you multiply these two things, you get the multiplicative identity, one. And we saw that if a is not zero and b is not zero, that or at least one of them is not zero, that you're going to get this for the reciprocal of the complex number. Notice that this can be thought of as a minus ib over a squared plus b squared. In other words, the conjugate of the original number divided by the square of the modulus. All right, so that's another way to write the reciprocal of a complex number. What this equals then is it equals z to the negative one power, or if you prefer, one over z. Let me highlight that, that one. There's another way that you could see why that works, and that other way would be to take <clears throat> the expression one over z and multiply both the top and the bottom of that fraction by z bar, the complex conjugate of z. On the top, 1 times z bar is z bar. On the bottom, z times z bar, just like I have up here, gives you the square of the modulus of z. So this is another important equation to make sure you know. I think I'll end this video here now. In the next video, and in a lot of coming videos, we're going to get into the polar representation of a complex number that will help us understand this stuff even more fully.